Thank you very much for joining us uh, here today. Um, and it's my great pleasure to introduce um, Vaishali Sankar from the Northland Transportation Alliance. So Vaishali is one of the New Zealand chapters recipients of the uh, early career scholarships with the college. Um, and as part of that um, scholarship process, uh, there is an opportunity for a webinar presentation as part of that uh, to demonstrate some of the work that um, the recipients have been undertaking in the road safety space. And Vaishali will be speaking to us today about supporting safe, green and healthy school travel in Dargaville. Uh, now, for those of you who might be joining us from further afield than New Zealand, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Dargaville is a small town in uh, the Northland region of New Zealand, has a population of around 5,000 people. So nice small town, but good um, grassroots people. Uh, so I'll hand over now to Vaishali and she'll step you through her presentation. Just a reminder that um, if you have any questions, uh, please use the Q&A chat box um, uh, in, the, uh, in the Zoom toolbar down the bottom there, uh, and we'll have opportunity for Q&A at the end of the session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul, for such a great introduction and welcome all. And I'll try to uh, do a good job at this presentation. Please forgive me uh, if it's not up to the mark as you expected. This is my first time, so I do apologize for that now. And I'm just trying to share screen. Is it up yet? Yeah, we can see that. That's great. Perfect. That's great. Thank you, Paul. Um, so welcome all. And as uh, Paul mentioned, I'm Vaishali Sankar, and I'm a road safety and traffic engineer at the Northland Transportation Alliance. For many of you who might not know what NTA is, it's pretty much a collaboration between the roading departments uh, of Kaipara, Far North, uh, Fungre, and the Northland Regional Councils. So we pretty much just work together to provide a better transport solutions for the Northland region as a whole. And today I'm just going to be talking about uh, providing, uh, supporting safe, green and healthy school travel in Dagwell by providing uh, an active modes project through an active modes project. So um, this, uh, what, what I'm going to be focusing on is uh, here is that introducing road safety aspects as part of the project rather than having road safety as a whole. Yeah. So I'll just take you through how uh, and when this started. Okay, so as you can see, as Paul mentioned, Dagwell is a pretty small town and has only a population of 5,000 people. But as you can see in this map here, it has a grid line structure, which means more intersections, which means uh, you it makes uh, much unsafe for pedestrians and cyclists to cross over and more crashes at the intersections as well. And uh, the yellow dots here, or the tents, as I should say, represents five schools. Even though it's such a small a small town, it still has five schools within the town itself, which includes three primary. These three are the primary schools here. And this is an intermediate, and this is the high school. And as you can see here, this is the walking and cycling strategy map that was developed by Kaipara and back in 2017. And uh, it has identified some of the key routes for active and uh, for walking and cycling uh, uh, routes that needs to be uh, provided. And Dagwell itself in general has uh, either footpath uh, on both sides, or at least on one side of most of these roads, but definitely uh, no uh, cycling uh, options available. It's just on road cyclists if you, if you want to do so. Um, so I'm just going to run you through so, some of the key routes as it is vital for the project that we have developed here. So as you can see here, number one, the uh, route that has been marked as number one is Victoria Street. And down here is the town center itself. So that's where we've got some cafes and some uh, local shops and businesses that's uh, run through here. And then uh, the number that has been marked as six is Hokianga Road. And that's a road that comprises of the town hall, the council building and whatnot. And it connects uh, further up north into uh, the other districts and other towns as well. So that is one of the key route connection that was identified through the walking and cycling strategy. And uh, if you look over here, the one marked as uh, route number 10, uh, that is called Avakino Road. And this has been marked as important because we've got the Dagwell Hospital here. And if I'm not wrong, that's like the only hospital that I've that we've got in Dagwell. And in addition to that, we received a prior plan change application further up north uh, on Avakino Road. It is a no exit road. And for most of you who may not know what a prior plan change is, uh, uh, it's pretty much just re applying to rezone uh, some of the land within that space. So for example, 
this location, oh, this location here, if you can see my cursor, that would currently be uh, zoned as a rural production or a rural zone. And the applicants or the owners would want to convert it to a residential zoning. So they just apply for a plan change. And uh, it's it's pretty much like a massive development. Uh, and they propose over around 300 lots or so. Uh, so that is a pretty major development for Dagobal or Kaipara in general. <laughs> And as you can see, the one marked as number two is the state highway. Um, and uh, state highway is uh, run by Wakakutahi. So Wakakutahi is the road controlling authority. Therefore, they will they will be the deciding authority and not us. So we're just the local, we just look after the local roads, whereas Wakakutahi look after, looks after all the state highway networks. And in addition to that, we also received another private plan change down this side here, which is not visible in the map, but there's another private plan change which proposes again around 300 lots or so. Therefore, any walking and cycling connections within Dagwell would be vital for all these uh, developments that's coming up. Um, so just go going to go on and explain about the project itself. So back in September 2022, um, government decided to uh, invest around $348 million uh, through this uh, program called the Transport Choices Package. Uh, and its main focus was to uh, provide better walking and cycling options or better transport options to the uh, communities here and to make it healthier and safer uh, for the communities in general. So they had four categories in here, which included providing better cycling networks, which focused on public transport, which focus on providing uh, better walking uh, or connections, better walkable neighborhoods and uh, encouraging uh, schools uh, or students to walk or cycle to their schools. So given Dagwell is such a small town, we definitely do not have a public transport network. Therefore, our uh, expression of interest uh, that we had to apply for in order to secure the funding uh, included only these three categories here. Yeah, and given we've got five schools, our major focus was on providing better and safer and healthy uh, school travel plans. So just to give uh, give you a bit of highlight, um, this was done in September 2022, right? So we received confirmation from Walker Kodahi that we have secured funding and we would be, that is Kaipara would be receiving funding of approximately $900,000 as the pre-implementation, which is only for design monitoring side of things and community engagement. And that was done in December 2022. And we had pretty tight timeframes. Uh, for those of you who might have heard, is, heard of this project, uh, initially um, they suggested that all all the projects should have been completed, that is construction should be completed by June 2024. Um, and later on, that was uh, changed a bit. So this is a plan that we submitted as part of the expression of interest, right? So as you can see here, I, I know it's not clear, but I'll just run you through what we proposed, okay? So uh, the dotted green lines, the light green lines represent the shared path connections. And we've just provided those at some of the key routes that we thought was going to be utilized by the students and the residents uh, to travel down to the town center and the schools itself. And uh, if you look closely, there is this minute difference uh, between this one, uh, these two lines here. So this is, I would say, teal green. Uh, so we proposed all uh, on-road cycle lanes as well as an alternate for Hokianga Road because that was identified as part of the walking and cycling strategy. Uh, and in addition to that, we proposed uh, on-road cycle lanes on Victoria Street as well because it connects down into the town center. And in addition to that, we had a business case uh, in uh, that was ongoing, which, uh, which had uh, further connections down State Highway 12. <laughs> And the yellow dotted lines just represent the shadow markings, which is marked as, mas marked as other TBD. But uh, that was just indicative at that point in time. So shadow markings, we were just going to analyze the speed environment and see if it would work. Uh, otherwise, we would have provided alternate solutions to the sh as a shared path or uh, on road cycle lanes uh, for the cyclists to use. So uh, even though uh, we submitted a plan, we still wanted to go through the optioneering phase and do the safe system assessments and determine which would suit our network perfectly. Because, uh, I mean, even with the tight timeframes, we definitely wanted to do the right thing. So what we did was, uh, myself and the designer, we came up with six options that we wanted to consider. Um, and I'm just going to run you through the options that we did consider. So the first one, obviously, is the shared use path, because given it's a, such a small community, it'll be better utilized. And most people do work. And the area, Darkville, pretty much has an aging population. So we do have mobility, quite a lot of mobility scooters. When we went out on site, there were quite a lot of them. So we thought shared use path uh, should, should definitely be up on the board. And then the second option that we considered was a separated cycleway. And uh, we... Uh, 
if if I'm not mentioned this earlier, uh, dal will pretty much has pretty wide berms in some regions. Uh, for uh, for the for example, the state highway network I think would have like a twenty meter carriageway itself, and then uh, you would pretty much have like thirty meter legal width. Um, so uh, the road reserve itself would be thirty meters, so which is like massive. Uh, if you look at the town itself with the population and stuff like that, so uh, some of the other routes do have massive berms as well and massive road reserve. Therefore, we we had a lot of room to work with, and hence we can consider the separated cycleway option as well. And the third option that we looked at was the monodirectional cycle lanes. Uh, uh, of course, it would include separators. Uh, so that was the other option. And we would definitely lose parking as part of it. But we thought it should definitely be considered and it should at least be put forth to the council and the community for them to have a chance to look at it. OK. So if I go through the other three options, so the option four was the bi-directional cycle lanes. Even though this might not fit all the road network, we thought at least we should be considering it for certain locations where it would work. That, and hence it was part of the optioneering phase as well. And then the fifth one is the painted cycle lanes. It's just uh, on-road painted cycle lanes markings without any separations between the live lanes and the cyclists themselves. So that was in there as one of the options. And the last one was shadow markings. For those of you that are, that may not know, shadow markings is pretty much just a stencil marking on the road, directing cyclists to go on road where, uh, to share the lane with the uh, cars or the vehicles. And again, uh, this was only considered for certain locations because it has to be a low speed environment for that to actually work and not create more safety hazards for the cyclists. So um, we then engaged uh, a consultant, an independent consultant, to undertake the safe system assessment. So uh, what a safe system assessment is, is pretty much you just assess all the options that we've got here, and then you provide a score. Uh, you provide uh, different scores based on the exposure, uh, likelihood, and the severity of a crash occurring. And then uh, the lower the score, the safer it is, and the higher the score, the the more unsafe it is. Uh, so I'm just going to run you through of how we determined uh, what it need to be. And in addition to that, we actually didn't provide the plan that we had in mind to the uh, consultants. So what we requested them to do was we asked them to uh, go through these options and uh, provide us with the safest option that we can actually implement and also uh, uh, provide us with a project plan as to what can, what they think should be the right thing, uh, what they think is the right thing for Dargo itself as a whole. So if you look here, as you can see, option two, uh, which was the separated cycleway, given it is separated both from the pedestrians and the carriageway and the vehicles itself, it is considered the most uh, safest option. And as I mentioned before, given most of Dargaval does have footpath at least on one side, uh, we still have uh, some uh, place for pedestrians to walk through. So it has a score of 140 or 43. So given it has a pretty low score, um, that's considered the most safest option here. And as you can see, option five, which is just the painted uh, cycle markings on road, um, is uh, uh, the least safest, given uh, it does not provide any separation between the vehicles, uh, which increases, act actually, in my opinion, it just increases uh, the risk, crash risk, rather than reducing it. So therefore, that shouldn't be considered. And as uh, you can see, that was identified as part of the safe system assessments as well. So this is the project plan that we received from the from the team, and uh, it was uh, it was it to be honest, it's it's pretty much just synced with what we initially submitted, uh, except for the separated cycleways here on Victoria Street, because that was one of the options that we did not consider earlier. But most of it, uh, most of what they were proposing was to have shared path, because uh, uh, it'll have a much more uh, uptake uh, from the community perspective, and uh, they actually had to consider the buildability, feasibility, and uh, other safety issues uh, and they were on ground and they had a better, better opportunity to have a look through and they've come up with this plan here. Uh, so as you can see, Victoria Street towards the end, they have proposed separated cycleways. And one of the reasons was because we had pretty much like six meter wide berms uh, to work with. And uh, we already had footpaths on both sides. So that was uh, a win-win situation. And as I mentioned earlier, we also had a business clear case that's ongoing. Uh, therefore, uh, by providing the separated cycleway at this point in time, uh, it secures an opportunity for cyclists to go through State Highway 12 in future when that project comes into place. So we were looking at the wider perspective as well, not just uh, on what this project would fund on. 
And then option three, they've uh, they've actually suggested using uh, monodirectional cycle lanes with separators just along uh, Plunkett Street here because it, it is, even though intermediate school has a direct connection along here as well, they most of the students do use Plunkett Street and they have an internal connection with the high school. And uh, given the age uh, and uh, uh, update, I, I think uh, the safe system audit team considered that to be a safer option for the students as well. And hence, they suggested using on-road cycle lanes here. And as, as I said earlier, option six for the town center alone, uh, because we have existing speed humps over there, therefore, and uh, given it has small businesses, shops, uh, cafes, and stuff like that, the operating speed is pretty low. And we did measure it out on site. And even on our site visits, we've noticed that uh, people in general are pretty, uh, I mean, car users are pretty friendly and they do give way to pedestrians and cyclists as you move forward. So it works pretty well at the town center itself. And hence, uh, we they've suggested option six here. So coming to the fun part here, which is the community engagement side of things. Uh, so based on uh, what we received from the Safe System Audit team and what we initially had in mind, we developed two different options to take to the community. And uh, this was actually suggested by the Kaipara District Council's Comms and Engagement Team. So what they said was, uh, instead of pro providing just one option to them and forcing them you know, to provide feedback, we can actually give them two different options to choose from. And in addition to that, they can provide feedback or suggest changes to the project as well. Um, therefore, we had to take that approach and uh, we came up with two different options that we thought was the best idea at that point in time. And before we actually went ahead with these two options to the community, we actually took it to our elected members to get their opinion and feel about how they think this project will work. And we actually just elaborated a bit on uh, a background uh, about the walking and cycling strategy and how we, uh, the timeframes that we had and what would work and would not work within our community itself. So as you can see here, option one, the green dotted lines represent the shared path markings. So uh, as part of option one, we just uh, went ahead with the initial plan that we had uh, and uh, along with taking some uh, inclusions from the safe system audit team, uh, which means we changed the shared path on Victoria Street to separate the cycleway. So that was included as part of option one. And for option two, we went ahead with on-road cycle lanes, that is monodirectional cycle lanes with separators, because that was the other sa next safest option uh, that we could choose from, because uh, uh, we definitely could not fit in separated cycleways at some of these locations. Uh, even though uh, there were certain streets that had wider bumps, the others, there were just power poles and uh, ev there were just massive uh, intrusions right in the way. Therefore, we, can, uh, we couldn't build or we will not be able to build the separated cycleways in place. And hence, these two uh, uh, options were proposed and taken to the community. So given our focus is mainly on the five schools in Dagobal, what we did was we initially, uh, we had a direct engagement with one of those schools, which is the Dagobal Primary School here. As you can see, they've got quite a few connections uh, uh, given it is a grid network and given they are centrally located, they have quite a few roads that connect directly into their school here. And hence, we thought we definitely need to have a direct engagement or, or a workshop with them. And what we did was we had an in-person workshop with some of the representatives from schools, uh, the school students. And uh, it was actually a pretty good to have that particular workshop because they had so much uh, cool ideas. For example, uh, they actually suggested that um, if we were going to do the walking and cycling project, council uh, provide some scooters or some uh, give uh, students to rent out some cycles or scooters uh, for them to be able to use that uh, in order to use the shared parts or cycle lanes that we were going to propose. And it was really nice to hear all those uh, amazing ideas that we can incorporate along with this project rather than just, you know, uh, putting the infrastructure in place. Um, and that was really cool. I, I think that was the coolest part of this project. And uh, in addition to that, we definitely did not ignore the other four schools. We, uh, given the tight time frames, we actually did a uh, school service. We printed out some questions uh, specific to the schools. For example, uh, for, uh, when we consider St. Joseph's here, given its direct connection is through Charlotte and Hokianga here, we asked them what type of solution or what type of uh, infrastructure that they would like in place. That is, whether it can be a shared path or a cycle lane and what the students think should uh, think that it should be the right thing to do oh, at that particular location. So that's how we work with the other four schools here. 
But in addition to that, we also did the community engagement side of things. So we had for, they, the community had four weeks uh, to provide their feedbacks and provide submissions on this particular those two options that we proposed. And uh, we also had two drop-in sessions uh, through which they can actually direct, uh, directly provide feedback to us, and uh, they can just have a discussion with us about what they think is the best uh, idea for their community here, because they are the ones that are going to be using it every day. Uh, therefore, they'll know what the best. Um, and in general, it was uh, it was pretty. I mean. Uh, if uh, half of them were supportive and half of them, the other half was, uh, uh, they just didn't like the project and they just weren't, they they were focusing on some of the other issues within the roading network, well, such as potholes, I think, which we hear a lot, uh, to be honest, but um, given the opportunity, this is the opportunity and given uh, we're such a small town, we had to emphasize that this is our opportunity to utilize the budget that we've got in hand and this is the way that we can do it. Therefore, uh, that's, that's what we were working towards and well, we asked them to focus on what we have in hand and how we can improve this particular plan in place. And through the community engagement in general, we got a feedback, total feedback of 320 people from 320 people. And uh, to be honest, 219 were in general support of the project, whether it be uh, option one or two or a combination of both. Some of them suggested that we mix both of those options together and come up with a better plan. And, um, and the most preferred option was a shared path. And as you can see here, uh, the desired lines I've got on the right, if you can see, these are the desired lines that are for the school students that was identified to the through the surveys uh, and the in-person workshops that we can cons uh, consult it. Uh, so what happened was in one of the uh, drop-in sessions, uh, some of the community members did specify that they do see quite a lot of high school and intermediate school students coming down to Purori to cross over the state highway network here. And uh, initially, what we were proposing was to have a crossing on over here through Avakino because it was going to connect directly through the hospital here but uh that's why we need to do the community engagement because they know the best and they provide us with uh feedback and uh, they provided with better options that we haven't considered before so as you can see here so based on every information that we gathered this was the final concept plan that we came up with. So uh, even though this, this was just a map that we drew up for the community uh, to put up in our website for community and also to take it up to council. But at the same time, our designers were working on the concept plans because we had a pretty tight time frame, which was we had to submit our designs by September 2023. So that was uh, it was pretty crazy. We had like nine months in hand uh, to do all of these works and submit the designs as well, detailed designs as well. So as you can see, we've uh, gone up with the option of shared use path. So uh, which was uh, prayer, which was. Uh, uh, which was where we got the support and uh, we had to remove the separated cycleway option on Victoria Street because uh, both the community and the council felt that uh, it wouldn't fit well with the network and it would just be a piece of uh, infrastructure that doesn't really suit any of the other uh, networks so they just didn't want that option to be there instead they suggested we have a shared path that runs along through the park here and connects onto Selwyn Park School so that's what we went with so that's uh, that's the uh uh, thing that you do with the community engagement you get their feedback instead of just throwing them out you incorporate some of those wherever you can and you make those changes and uh, that way you get the community be community to be happy and you get the councillors the elected members to be happy and you get the political support that you need in order to proceed with this project and just to explain a bit further more on how we're going to be reducing speeds on these networks, given it is a grid line structure. And as I mentioned earlier, most of these uh, crashes or safety risks are at the intersections itself. You can, if you see, uh, look at these red blobs here. Those are the proposed uh, raised uh, crossings or courtesy crossings. So we haven't we haven't really worked on the details yet, but um, uh, these were the suggestions that was put in place. But not all of them are going to be raised stable zebras. So we are going to be having them. At only at certain locations for example outside St. Joseph school that would be a race stable zebra crossing or an outside Pri Dagwell primary school that would be a race stable zebra crossing and of course on state highway it's definitely going to be a race stable zebra because uh race stable mid actually it's going to be mid block race stable zebra crossing because there's no way we, we can just have a courtesy crossing on the state highway network because the heavy vehicles that go through these roads are just 
that, that that's just it's twelve percent or fifteen percent if I'm not wrong. Um. So yeah, but that's you, and that's the thing that actually separates the residential neighborhood and the town center itself. Therefore, it has to be the safest option. So um, we did consider uh, signalized race table crossings at some point, but uh, but the budget that we had um uh that wasn't feasible and that wasn't possible at this point in time. So what we did was uh we chose uh the second safest option, which was going to be the race table seat mid block crossing, and in future we were going to convert it into a signalized race table crossing. And these violet blobs here are going to be refuge islands. So even though um, we removed some of these crossing locations from State Highway, we still thought there needs to be alternate location that they can still cross. And hence the reason uh, uh, we provide some, ref we thought we would provide some refuge islands. And of, of course, we would need to gain uh, permission from Wakukutahi because they are still the road controlling authority. So any works within the State Highway would have to go through Wakukutahi here. Uh, so again, the safe system audits, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we had to do it at every stage of the process. So uh, given we did it at the optioneering phase, now it's the concept design phase, right? So we've got a plan in place now and we requested the same team again to come up and do a safe system audit again for us. And uh, given this is a walking and cycling pro uh, project, the key focus uh, of the safe, safe system specs were pedestrians, uh, pedestrian type crashes, cyclist type crashes, and intersection type crashes. So as you can see, here, based on the existing conditions, uh, the pedestrians and cyclists crash scores are around 21, 21 each. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the lower the score, the better, the safer the option is, and the higher the score, the less safe uh, or unsafe it is. And uh, if you look at the intersection uh, type crashes, it's scored at an 18. So based on the proposed design, if you look here, the scores have drastically decreased. So it's gone down to an eight from a 21, and that's what we really want, right? To incorporate safety aspects as part of the project rather than uh, you know, do it just doing a walking and cycling project and then going back and doing another safety aspect uh, as a separate project. So you just want to incorporate both in together as one. So that's what we needed and that's what we've achieved. So we've come down to a score of eight, which makes it more safer for both uh, pedestrians and cyclists. In addition to that, even the intersection type crashes have reduced down to an eight and that's mainly because we will be bringing down the speed environment uh, by introducing those race crossings, which will act as a speed table as well. Therefore, the operating speeds will reduce down drastically as well. And hence, uh, the whole safe system call has reduced as well. And this becomes a much safer option. And to be honest, this is more of a holistic approach. It's, uh, it's not street by street. Uh, given this is one project as a whole, uh, that's how the safe system assessment was conducted as well. It wasn't based on each and every street, but they did do some risk analysis and they did provide us some comments for every particular street and every single crossing that we proposed, but that was all further. I just wanted to mainly focus on the safe system aspects or safe system scoring over here. So in summary, this particular project is approximately to provide 800, eight, I'm sorry, not 800, definitely not, eight kilometers of walking and cycling network in Dagobal itself, especially around those five schools. So those are our key connections to provide a, a, a better walking and cycling connections to those schools and to the neighborhood and also to the town center itself. So this will definitely be achieved by providing that particular safe crossing on the state highway network because that is the one that is being separating the residential neighborhood and the town center itself. Thank you so much. I'll be happy to take questions right now. I'm just going to figure out how to share, stop sharing. Ooh, here it's hey, uh, thank you so much, Rochelle. Uh, that was, that's really, really interesting uh, project and some great yeah. work that you've been doing so early in your career there in Dargaville. Uh, we do have a, a couple of questions coming through, so I'll put those to you and um, you do uh, your best to answer those. So the first question that I have is, if you had more time to design the project, do you think you would have come up with a different outcome? If I'm being honest, I don't think so. Uh, we could have included a lot more aspects in it, but not a different outcome because Shep, I mean, given we just have footpaths at this point in time, we just wanted to introduce a different aspect into the community where they encourage or a way to look out for the cyclists as well. And I think shared path would have been the best option at this point in time because it is such a small community. And uh, uh, given you don't have many cyclists uh, at this point in time, it wouldn't have encouraged or it wouldn't have warranted any other type of solution. 
Excellent. Um, and a, a follow-up question. Was there any support for a raised intersection versus raised crossings? Um, so uh, with the raised intersection, uh, we it definitely had support from us and definitely from Walk Kodahi, but at that particular uh, intersection, for example, of Aquino Road, it had pretty uh, bad sight lines and we had major issues. As I mentioned, it was a 20 meter wide carriageway. So there was no way we could, yeah, there was no way uh, we could work around with anything. And hence we had to move the location or relocate it to some other point. And that's the reason we had to go with Parori Street. And there was no way we could uh, reduce the right turning base uh, or the number of lanes that was in there because it does have major usage from heavy vehicles. So, and mm -hmm. we wouldn't uh, have definitely gained uh, support from Wakotahi to of doing so as well. And it was, it was of a much larger picture. I mean, that would definitely have taken time and would have been done with a business case, but not at such a short frame, the time frame that we had in. Excellent. Yeah, no, I fully understand. That is, that's getting pretty wide when you're getting 20 metres wide carriageway. Yeah. Um, final question that I, oh no, not the final question, another one just came in. Um, so how did you navigate getting elected members to support the project? So, uh, if I'm being honest, not all of them were in support. Uh, uh, we especially had one uh, ward member from Dagwell who was uh, against the project because I don't think I mentioned this as part of the presentation because we did get a petition against the project. Uh, therefore, we definitely had to address it. And yeah, we definitely had to address it. And it was more focused on the uh, higher level and projects that was out of scope of this particular one and does it and it didn't really fit within the criteria that we had from Walk Kutahi. So what we did was we actually had to take out the elected members out for, on a walk to explain what exactly we're going to be doing and how we did it. And we went out on a walk and we explained everything. We gave them a map in hand and we were like, this is how it's going to work. And now you see it. So let us know how what do you think? And that's how they they actually got on board, to be honest. <laughs> Right, so so actually taking um, yeah. the the councillors out there into the field and okay. stepping them through, right? That's very good. Um, what was your favourite part of working on the project? Oh, to be honest, everything. Because <laughs> this was my first project ever, so it was just uh, amazing. I started from scratch. Uh, I had a look at the walking and cycling strategy and that was all I had in hand. So I just had to uh, make every decision by myself and my team lead was an awesome help. It's just the whole project itself is close to my heart because it's my first one ever. So everything was really great, <laughs> especially the community members. Some of them were just amazing. The ideas that you get from them and the school kids, it's just, yeah, when you go out on a workshop with the school kids, they're just amazing. They just support every step and they just like every idea and they provide new ones as well. It's just, it was really good to listen to all of those things. Presumably the kids want to just uh, walk around their community or bike around their community a lot more and right. more and yeah, yeah. You see the benefits of what you're trying to achieve. That's right. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, for a for a first project uh, into this uh, area, I think you've done tremendously well. You've explained it very well, and you've clearly got a really uh, detailed understanding of the issues and the process and the design and everything like that. Uh, so congratulations. I think that um, that's a big success. Um, so for anyone else cool. that's still online, um, if you have any other questions, um, uh, please feel free to pop them in the Q&A. Otherwise, we'll... Um, all this to a close very shortly. Um, we'll just give it a 30 more seconds to see if anyone's busy typing away there uh, for a question. Yep. So um, what was your background, Vishali, um, before you joined the NTA? Did you, um, you come from university or...? Yeah, yeah. I actually I worked as a site engineer in Auckland for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this was my first job actually relating back to my uh, major. So mm -hmm. I was really excited. It's, it's been amazing. Uh, to be mm -hmm. honest, NTA is a really uh, wide spectrum. So you get to work in project management, you get to do road safety, you get to do asset management, you get to get a feel of everything. So I guess that's the benefit of working, uh, you know, across three councils and the regional council as a whole. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, look, um, we don't have any further um, uh, questions coming in, but just again, congratulations and thank you so much for taking the time to share your experience on this project with 
uh, the college and our members today. Um, and I wish you all the best for, for the future. I can see that there's a lot of um, people who are providing their support to you as well um, through Thanks this. So, so congratulations. Thank Thanks for Charlie. Really okay. appreciate the time. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. And thanks, everyone else for joining us today.